Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on compare properties of functions. Our objective is to compare properties of functions. Our real world link deals with the Science Museum. Carlos and Stephanie belong to the Science Museum. Carlos's membership can be represented by the function C equals $9.99, where C represents the cost in dollars. The cost of Stephanie's membership is shown on the table. Now we want to make a table to represent Carlos's membership. Well, let's go with the months being one, two, three, and four. And the cost, well, that's going to be $9.99 for month one, $9.99 for month two, $9.99 for month three, and $9.99 for month four. Why is it not increasing by $9.99 each month? Well, there is no uh, months to multiply here. It's just the cost is $9.99. So describe the rate of change for each function. Well, as we just kind of said, Carlos's membership has a rate of change of zero. The rate of change for Stephanie's membership is five dollars a month. As you can see from month to month it's increasing by five. Who pays more for a two-month membership? Ship. Well, Stephanie And why is that? Well, she pays $10 for a two-month membership. While Carlos only pays $9.99. Who pays more for a six-month membership? Well, once again, Stephanie. She will pay $30 and how did we get that $30? Well, if it's $5 a month, that's just six times five. And then Carlos will pay, and you guessed it, $9.99. And again, notice how in Carlos's membership, there is no independent variable. So the dependent variable C doesn't change. There's no month here uh, compared to Stephanie's where you can see where it's increasing by $5 a month. So let's continue. Functions can be represented by a table, graph, equation, or words. You can compare two functions represented in different forms. So a certain car has a gas mileage of 22 miles per gallon. The gas mileage of a certain sport utility vehicle is represented by the function shown. Compare their gas mileage. Well, let's look at the car first. The car, as it says, has 22 miles per one 
gallon. Okay, what about the SUV? Well, that's in our graph. And if we look at our graph, we have gallons used and miles driven. And as we look up here, we have 19 miles per one gallon, 38 miles per two gallons, 76 miles per four gallons. And when you simplify all of those, there is a constant rate of change here, and that becomes 19 miles per one gallon. And even if you were to take 38 over 2, that simplifies into 19 over 1, as does 76 over 4. That also simplifies into 19 over 1. Now to write our concluding statement here, the car has the higher or greater gas mileage. As 22 miles per one gallon is greater than 19 miles per one gallon. The number of new movies a store receives can be represented by the function m equals 7w plus 2, where m represents the number of movies and w represents the number of weeks. The number of games the same store receives is shown in the table. Compare the y-intercepts and rates of change of these functions. Well, let's deal with the movies part first. And with the movies, we have the equation m equals 7w plus 2. Now this looks and is basically our slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope and b is our y-intercept. So right away, we should be able to say, okay, my y-intercept is 2, whereas my rate of change is 7. In other words, 7 movies per week. Now, what about our games? The games is a little more complicated. We need to actually calculate our rate of change in our y-intercept. And let's deal with the rate of change first. Now, if we look at how we change with the number of games, this is increasing by 3 each time, whereas the weeks are increasing by 1 each time. So that's a change of three games per one week. So our rate of change is three games per week. To get our y-intercept, we have a rate of change and we have an ordered pair. So we can say, well, our rate of change was 3, and our ordered pair is 1, 3, just taking it right from the table, 1 week, 3 games. Well, if we write our equation in y equals mx plus b form, we can actually solve for b, the y-intercept. So if our y is 3 equals our slope of 3 times 1 plus b, 3 times 1 is just 3, When you subtract 3 from each side, you get 0 equals b. So our y-intercept is 0. So to compare the function's y-intercepts and rates of change, well, the movies has a larger y-intercept and a higher rate of change. How many new movies and games will the store have in week six? Well, let's go ahead and use the equation for the movies part, where movies equals seven per week plus two, 
and we can substitute in 6 for weeks. So m equals 7 times 6 plus 2. 7 times 6 is 42, and then plus 2 is 44 movies. And now that we have our slope of 3 and a y-intercept of 0 for our games, we can come up with an equation in that y equals mx plus b form to help us solve this part. We can say, well, our y here is our games. So we can say, OK, games is going to equal 3 per week. And our y-intercept is 0. So we can just say, well, plus 0 or just leave it off. So our games is going to equal 3 times 6. And our games is going to be 18 games. So 44 movies and 18 games in week 6. Now our financial literacy question states, Mandy and Sarah each have a membership to the gym. Mandy's membership is represented by the function y equals 3x plus 29, where x represents the number of hours with the trainer and y represents the cost. The cost to Sarah's membership is shown in the graph. So the previous example, we had an equation and a table and we compared. This question, we have an equation and a graph. So once again, we're asked to compare the y-intercepts and rates of change. So if we start with Mandy, and we have her equation, y equals 3x plus 29. Remember, we have y equals mx plus b, where m is our rate of change or slope, and b is our y-intercept. So we can say, OK, my rate of change is equal to 3. And that 3 is $3 her hour. Her y-intercept is equal to $29. Let me rewrite that there to make it a little bit cleaner. As you can tell, I don't have my stylus today. I'm using my, my hand, so it's a little bit tougher. Now let's figure out Sarah. Now, with Sarah, we have a y-intercept already shown here, 0, 39. x is 0, y is 39. So we already know her y-intercept is equal to $39. And now we need to calculate the rate of change. Well, remember, rate of change, m, is y2 minus y1, wow, one more shot at that, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now we get to pick two points. I would pick the 0, 39 and 4, 51. And so y2 minus y1 would be 51 minus 39 over 4 minus 0. And 51 minus 39 is 12 over 4, which equals 3. So Sarah's rate of change is also three dollars per hour. So in Mandy and Sarah's case, the rate of change is the same. They're both being charged three dollars per hour. But the y-intercept represents the initial cost, and Sarah's thirty-nine dollar y-intercept shows a higher initial cost than Mandy's. 
Now, what will be the total cost for Mandy and Sarah if they each have four hours with the trainer? Well, in Mandy's case, we're given the equation y equals 3x plus 29. And so we can substitute in the 4. y equals 3 times 4 plus 29. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 29. y equals 41. So Mandy pays $41. Now, that's Mandy's. Sarah's, we actually do not even need to calculate this time because we're given the point 451. And so we can just look right there and say, well, she pays $51. So. For four hours, Mandy pays $41, whereas Sarah pays $51. And again, sorry about the slight sloppiness on the writing today. I didn't have my style. Let's just use my fingernail. Hope everything made sense. That's it for today's lesson. Good luck.